Hello guys, we are mechanical students from UNIAP! I'm Tiran Jet, I'm Chai Chirai, I'm Go Wei Hong, I'm Mo Kai Xing. Our main topic for this assignment is the first law of thermodynamics. And our title is Car Air Conditioning System. Let's talk about how the aircon from the car come from. A company in New York City, in the United States, was the first offered installation of air conditioning for car in 1933. Most of the customer operates luxury car. In 1933, Packard became the first automobile manufacturer to offer an air conditioner in, it, in its own car. The air conditioner was initially grow in population, but by 1970s, almost half of the new cars produced had air conditioning. Although over 75 years, the air conditioning in your car now still works to the same basic principle as developed in 1930s. Our air conditioning system is made up of three parts, the compressor, the evaporator, and the condenser. The compressor is driven by a belt attached to the car engine. This is where the low pressure refrigerant gas is compressed into a high pressure, high temperature gas before being pumped to the condenser. Then the condenser works like your car's radiations by dissipating out heat but also cooling the high pressure refrigerant gas so it's formed into a high pressure liquid. Lastly, evaporator which is located within the vehicle interior is the part of the system where the refrigerant absorbs heat. So now I'm going to talk about how aircons work. The, F, the refrigerant resides in the aircon system. The aircon compressor initiates the high side of the system where it compresses the refrigerant into high pressure state, causing it to liquefy. It travels through the high pressure lines to the condenser. The condenser, which is similar to a small radiator, puts the liquid in contact with fresh air outside the vehicles, which absorb the heat from the liquid. It then flows into the expansion valves or the expansion valves where it is restricted and becomes gaseous in the low pressure side of the aircon system. It then flows into the receiver accumulators that contains a descent bag and to remove and collect unwanted moist and or water and the impurities. So, can we look about the engine system? The clean gaseous refrigerants then travel through tubing into the evaporator. That's usually located in the passenger compartment of the dash. The near refrigerant in its gaseous state is now able to absorb heat from the air passing through the evaporator fin, leaving behind the cooler air. Fan below this cooler dry air into the car cabinets. The refrigerants travel back to the compressor in the suction hose of the aircon system to get compressed back into the high pressure gas and begin the process again. I'm going to talking about the basic thermal principle. According to the thermal first law, all energy must be conserved. Energy is conserved in a refrigerant system by having both an evaporator and a condenser. Then heat supply to the system from the surrounding is the absorption of heat by the refrigerant in the air conditioning system is equal to the net work done by the entire air by the entire air conditioning system on its surrounding. It transfer heat from a high temperature to a body at low temperature. Aircon cannot operate unless its compressor is driven by an external power source. So now I'm going to talk about how was people live before and after the aircon system is invented. A more aerodynamic car with air conditioning, you can keep your window closed even on the hottest day. This means that the vehicle aerodynamics are at optimum level, increasing the safety of you and your passengers and reducing the exterior noise. Traffic jams and a hot day is popular in Malaysia's traffic. Without air conditioning, this is a pretty painful scenario, particularly if you are stuck in the car with young children and if you are dressed for business. Shitty armpits, hot, irritable family members, exhaust fumes, seeping in through the open windows. There are a distant memory with a corn. Yes, it's obvious. 
With air conditioning, you can reduce the temperature in your car without having to open the windows. Especially in Malaysia, we have a hot weather throughout the whole year. Driving slowly through the town with the window down is fun, but we don't recommend trying it on the motorway. You will end up being buffeted about what feels like gill force winds and there's no chance of hearing radio and the passengers. Too many traffic accidents are caused by over tiredness. Turning your air conditioner on will result in cleaner, fresher air. This in turn helps to prevent drowsiness and improve clean ventilation, meaning that you are able to remain fresh and alert. Thanks, Thanks guys, guys for watching, watching this video. video! Give us a like and leave any comments. <laughs> <laughs>